Hi, so tell me Linda, how did you get involved in this work we call stretch therapy? Well, I attended a workshop in 2003 mm -hmm. and met you and I had just opened my first commercial large studio and was struggling with a lot of rehab clients. You're a Pilates teacher, aren't Pilates, you? Pilates and um, I just didn't know what to do with knees that were tight and hip flexors and we'd had a lot of training around releasing but it wasn't doing the trick and after we did some of your work I instantly went back and used it with my clients and that was it for me. I realized that this was going to make a huge difference in my practice. Mm -hmm. And that was 10 years ago, over 10 years ago. And how many workshops have you hosted now? I think you said... I think this is the 14th. 14th, that's a lucky number, 14. Lucky. And so tell me, where do you see stretch therapy going in the future? I think it is imperative for everyone. I think society's falling asleep. I think they've lost a connection to their body and that's part of I call it the floating head syndrome. Mm. They'll come into my studio and say everything's fine and then we start working and they realize that they're in pain that they didn't know they were in. Mm. Um, there's tight parts that they had no connection to mm -hmm. and they can't even concentrate for one hour mm. on themselves. They've already lost their mind and they're off thinking about what's happening next or tomorrow or something to worry about. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did you find stretch therapy was helpful in your Pilates practice? Connecting to their body, number one, is probably the biggest thing. Then they can actually tell me what's going on while we're working. Mm -hmm. uh, hip flexors for low back pain, uh, piriformis for all sorts of back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain. Mm -hmm. uh, the shoulder routine for anybody that sits in an office mm -hmm. has been imperative and necks. Um, and a lot of my clients now come in on a day that they plan to work out and they want to stretch. And they're aware that that's better for them which is sort of a big turn in society. When I first started working this, Pilates was too mellow. They wanted to run around the room and jump up and down because they thought that was the only way they were going to be fit. And have a workout. Yeah. Yes. So there was this whole, you know, which is just starting to fade a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. But every time we run a workshop, everyone is in awe after we stretch the hip flexors. And they all look at us like, OMG, this is it. <laughs> And so where do you think we might go in terms of making stretch therapy more popular so that more people know about it? I think a certification mm -hmm. so that people can take a training, get to a level where they can actually share it with a client and, mm -hmm. and be a solo stretch therapist rather than having to be a massage therapist that offers stretch or whatever. They can just stretch mm -hmm. and then people will see, just stretch? I can come to that? Mm -hmm. What's that? And then they come, like we ran last week, a very small public class, or a short three-hour class. We had nothing but feedback. I mean, within 24 hours, every person had contacted us and said it was the best thing they'd ever attended. I saw some of the feedback. I was amazed by it. And so tell me, we normally run the stretch teacher courses as courses for teachers, but in fact, any ordinary person can benefit hugely from attending the six days too, can't they? And we've seen several. We've seen uh, high-end uh, people in the film industry locally here that have really stressful jobs that were not fit at all, very deconditioned. And again, a six-day workshop was like a sabbatical. Mm. It was like they'd been away. Mm. And they'd found a few little things that they could do daily or weekly to save themselves. Or at least they became aware that they could save themselves. It's also worth mentioning that we always do a meditation, a lying meditation component too, which most people find absolutely fantastic. Another epiphany for mm. them is mm. how unbelievably exhausted they are when they've stretched their body. And the, the feedback is, I'm very relaxed, but I'm so tired. And they've just taken that armor off and just actually felt who they are, mm. instead of just pushing themselves through life, mm. unaware of how they're actually feeling. Mm. I commonly ask my clients, what's important to you? And they look at me and say, I, I don't know. <laughs> so I think that's a big part of it. And when we're in the class, then they start to realize all the things they wanted or do want from stretching their body. Hmm. And they're suddenly thinking, wow, I, I want to feel good. I want more time off. I want to feel good in my body. This is now a priority for me. Whereas last week it was a car or something in their bank account that so has nothing to do with who you are and your time here on earth. And especially as you're getting older, if you want to look forward to any kind of retirement years where there's some pleasure involved, your health and your movement are the most important things. I talk um, now about what you do from 40 to 55 is what the rest of your life is going to look like.
So people think they come in and they'll say, suddenly my back is wrecked or my neck. And I'll say, no, no, you've been sitting at a computer for 10 years, not breathing hmm. in this stiff position. And now it's suddenly saying to you, I'm done. You know, I can't do this anymore. And they've just realized, wow, this doesn't feel good. And what are you going to feel like in five more years? Hmm. And we see people walking down the street. They can't breathe or be upright. And they can't even step off a tiny curb out of fear that they might fall over. That's so true. I feel younger than 10 years ago in my body. And I have more energy from the stretch and the combination of the strength training. Hmm. So it's been a huge just benefit for me. And that's how I've shared it with my clients is through me. And they see it. This is, in my view, this idea of embodiment of a set of ideals is absolutely critical. I've dealt with many practitioners who know all about stretching or strengthening, but don't actually do any of it themselves. Yeah. And I, we, I always encourage uh, all my clients and everyone in the workshop not to take notes. You know, if they had a little caveat of something or a reference, great, write it down, but stretch. Don't be sitting there writing an essay on what you're saying. Feel it in your body, you'll take that home. Your body will keep it with you and you'll remember what it felt like. And then when you go to practice, you'll know if you're doing it right because you remember. Hmm. Not from a note or a stick man drawing. The body remembers. Yeah. Yes. And then you'll share it because it's your, I mean, typically after the first night of a workshop, everyone stretched somebody with one of the stretches, but they couldn't help themselves. They were so excited. Yeah. They've run home, stretched their children, husband, neighbors, <laughs> you know, the waitress at the restaurant. Yeah. Is <laughs> there anything else you want to say or would that cover it, do you think? Oh, I can't wait. Next workshop, please. <laughs>